Yellen. Hello, sir. Hello. I put the updated flyers in the lobby. Trying to get this stuff in there because I know I'm not going to have time in the <laughs> middle of the meeting. <laughs> space.
like we might have another meeting of slim pickings. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve, just following up from last night uh, before anyone gets on, Matt's updated the flyer. We, we've got a meeting out there and I'm gonna send out a big, huge blast to basically my entire contact list um, and just say, hey, Opportunities still are out there. If you want, you know, outside of these, if you want to talk to us and attach flyers and surveys and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. Sounds good. It's not, but so much you can do. I don't know whether or not, uh, I mean, there's not many churches meeting in person but whether or not sharing it with local congregations. I think Chief's uh, gonna do that. He's got a really good list of, of those folks and he was gonna do that today too. All right, that's good. Yep. Yeah, we didn't have much of a crowd last night, but we certainly covered- <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> covered issues well with the three that were there. Yep. And now that I look at the screen, let's all remember we're also recording right now. No. <laughs> Thanks for that note. And I can trim if needed, <laughs> if anything slips. <laughs> hmm. uh, while the mention of sidewalks there for one block, uh, the individual that I, I talked to you at, about, Josh, at um, Jamestown Road, mm -hmm. he talked about Billy Lawing, yeah, uh, a council member from the past, saying he was working to try to get a sidewalk on Jamestown Road when he passed, don't know whether that ever went to anybody else. So I just want to throw that in the mix. I don't know how. how oh, yes, I... please let me answer that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, Billy was a very big advocate of that. Um, we were getting ready to budget for it. And we decided to say, hey, let's actually send out a survey to that entire street. We're considering sidewalks. This is what it would entail, kind of building it off to the side. <clears throat> it came back at huge percentages of no, don't do that to us. Don't have people walking through our yard. So huh. I kind of stopped it immediately. That's interesting. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'll pass that on back to the individual. I think we did something similar with speed humps out there too. Um, I seem to remember that there might have been a little survey of that. That was a concern out there. And as soon as the survey came back, people were like, no, I don't want that. <laughs> yeah. Same citizen asked, ask about that too. Yep. <laughs> yeah, different strokes for different folks. Yeah. And times change, you know, you, you never know the neighborhoods turn over. We'll see what people want now. Right. I'm thinking we hang on to at least 1210. And then Steve, do I remember, are you gonna be able to join the define assist meeting? Is that right later yeah. today? And that'll be at town hall, correct? I, I think it might be at the Y, Ashton town hall. You're right, it's here, it's here. Okay, all right, that's good. Yes, <laughs> it's one of six meetings today <laughs> <laughs> or six events anyway. Yep. Aha. Uh -huh. Hey, Jamie or Sasha, how are you? Well, it's just Jamie. Okay. <laughs> We're going to give people, since we have a super uh, small crowd today, uh, another five minutes to hop in. Sounds good. If you want something to kill your time while you're waiting, Jamie, go check out the chat and there are two surveys you can fill out if you're really uh, dying for something to kill your time. Josh, you might have to add those again. When you come in new, I don't think you see the older chat. Well, shucks, okay.
but I have a feeling Jamie has probably filled these out. <laughs> The Railway Avenue one, I had not. I was Good. That one. Yeah, the other one is the comp plan survey. So if you've already done that one, no need to duplicate. All right, looks like we've hit uh, 1210. So Jamie, you get a lot of personalized attention here. Um, so the, the format for these are typically we listen to citizens, but we also try to get a little bit of information out there. Um, so if you'll bear with me, I'll, I'll share with you what we'd hope to, to share with the community. And, you know, I know you're not a national resident, but we'd love for you to, you know, if you have friends and neighbors who are talking about things, um, sharing what, what we're willing to say. And then obviously you have comments you want to share with us about the town. We are happy to hear those as well. Um, the first big one is uh, a change to our uh, town council municipal elections. Those typically happen in May of even number years. The General Assembly this past year changed uh, the law to require all localities to have November elections. And so that kind of forced our hand to decide whether we were going to move it forward to November 2021 or back to November 2022. Um, our town council made the decision to move it forward. So November 2021 will be the next town council elections. And that does shorten all five of their terms by six months. So we think that, you know, maybe the more uh, reasonable approach of cutting their terms rather than extending them, which could look a little bit self-serving. Um, but the most important message we want to deliver is that the worst part of that is it really compresses the time frame to become a candidate. And so basically, if you or one of your neighbors or one of you, someone you know in town wants to run for council, 
they need to get all their paperwork and signatures together by June 8th of this year. So that's less than a month away. Um, and there's real basic requirements. You have to be a resident of Virginia, a resident of the town of Ashland, registered to vote um, in the town. And then what is it, 18 or 21? Do we remember? Anyone else remember? 18. 18. Um, and then you have to get 125 signatures of um, qualified voters in the town. And so it's easy to run, but we do have a compressed time frame. So we're doing a lot of these meetings to try to get the word out. Um, there's going to be two seats up for election this time. Uh, the one's currently held by Vice Mayor John Hodges and um, Dr. McGraw on council. They are both running again, but both of them, like we always do, are encouraging more participation. And so we always want um, to see diverse, wide-ranged um, candidates from all over, every neighborhood, every race, all that good stuff. So we're genuinely trying to get out there and get the word out. We do have flyers that we've been sharing. Um, you know, had we had a lot more people here, we'd be happy to put them up on the screen and I'm happy to share it with you if you want it. But um, that's message A number one that we're trying to get out there is that there's a compressed time frame, and we're really looking for folks to get in their paperwork and run for council. Steve, did I miss anything you normally would have shared? No, I think you covered everything. Okay. Yeah, we uh, we made that decision. Felt like that was in the best interest of uh, of the town and municipal elections. So uh, again, as, as Josh is saying, if we can help anyone out, uh, happy to do it. So we'll we'll see what see what comes out of it, and then from here on out, we're trying to keep our town elections off of the national cycle when it comes to the presidential election. So I think that's good for the next election, but I think it'll it'll be a good thing going forward as well. Yep, and I, I think you've heard my spiel in CLA, Jamie, but. Um... Our, par our elections are nonpartisan, which is one of the best things about them. So it's not about whether you're an R or a D or an L or an I or a G or any of that stuff. It's all about um, who's the right person for the community, who do you think will do the best job making the community what you want it to be. Yeah, uh -huh. I agree with that. I think that's a, the way to go for sure. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> um, so the other stuff that we just wanted to get out there and I can do it pretty quick. Carter Park Pool is going to open up again, so that uh, memberships are on sale. If you know anyone, if you guys want to participate, we'd strongly encourage you to. If you have friends or um, family or neighbors who may be interested but are worried about cost, we do scholarships to make sure that everyone has access to the pool. That's really important to us to make sure that that's not just for folks who can afford it, but is genuinely for the entire community. Um, so if you're interested, let us know about that. Um, the other one um, that we were trying to get out there was those two surveys. Town Council for that um, downtown section that you're gonna, you, you were gonna do the survey for, they're gonna, I hope, make that decision or we're gonna put it in front of them. There may need more time, but we're gonna put them in front of them on June 1st. So the, the decision's coming up pretty imminent here. Yeah. And in my mind, they're gonna make kind of two decisions. One, yes or no, do you wanna keep it closed or not? Um, and if yes, then we have a little bit of a design we can show them of, does this kind of fit what you're looking for to get rid of those barrels, get rid of the old police cruiser and make it a much more kind of Ashland feel and make it feel like it's a little more permanent. Um, I know from our perspective, and I think council wants the exact same thing. We've done a lot of direct input from the businesses right along there to make sure that they, their input is heard almost the most. Mm -hmm. um, but then this survey, um, it's blowing us away. We've had more respondents to it and gotten more input on it than we have on any issue in a long, long time. So um, there will be plenty of uh, input for council to consider as they make that decision. Good. Um, hey, and the one other one, Steve, yeah. did you, were you going to say something? Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Um, you had made the point when you shared it at the previous meeting that if we do decide to keep it closed, we're not going to do anything that makes it permanent. You know there'll be no uh, change in the in the environment to the extent that it could never be a road again or driven through. So just I think that's an important point to make. Yeah, the design we're looking for kind of keeps the activity close to the building. And yes, the walkway will be in the road, but a walkway and a road, more or less, pretty similar things that you could convert back if you really needed to. Yeah, and I th I think that's I think that's smart to keep it flexible because mm. you don't I mean. Um, when they were looking at doing the opening the farmer's market in Richmond on 17th Street, they were looking at designs on that. 
And and the main thing that appealed to me or and, and to other people about that was to keep it flexible for plug and play. So you can have different events down there. You can wet traffic through, you know, sometimes when you need to or not, you know, yeah. or, you know, so you can change it around and, and make it as flexible as you need it. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking at kind of the bollards with chain rather than a hard fence and that kind of thing. Um, and the other issue that I, I've been, I plan to talk to the community about is trash collection. That doesn't necessarily hit us because we have county waste and we're in the county, but um, you may have seen or heard friends talk about we're having a lot of issues with our contractor in town. Um, so, you know, we're, we're making a few changes there and following through on the long-term processes of trying to change our vendor. But in the interim, we're going to have our public work staff kind of follow up behind them and making sure that our citizens are getting the level of service that they need. Um, but we're obviously wide open to making sure we get direct feedback from the community as well. So yeah. um, I just went really quickly over the things I planned to talk about. Is there anything community wide you'd be willing to share about with us or? Um, yeah, I mean, I've had I've had people ask me about the downtown area and I told some people that there was a survey and I didn't know if you can send the if if. I could send the survey mm -hmm. to people or, you know, if I could forward it to people, how would I do that? Yep. I'll email it to you right after this. Okay. Um, probably both of them actually, because people okay. are asking yeah. about both of them. Yep. Um, and uh, let's see. I mean, the, I mean, one thing that's always of interest to me is that area between 95, I mean, I guess you call it the commercial district. And the you know the vacancies there. I mean, mm -hmm. I know what y'all are doing with the Apple Garden. Um, is there you know is there anything that you can um, yeah. tell me about about what's going on with the other? Because there's some, I don't know. I mean, there's some major vacancies as you know there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious as what, to what the analysis is of how to you know what the the analysis is of number one you know why has why does this exist mm -hmm. i guess number two um what are some options for addressing it sure you know? sure so i'll kind of go along the street a little bit and touch on some of the bigger ones um so closer to us right now uh pizza hut went out of business um you know the why i think large-scale corporate they had some stores that were were going under and ours was one of them i'm gonna yeah. guess that was a corporate decision. They, they got a decent amount of activity from a tax perspective. I can't tell you the exact amount, but I can say they did pretty well. Um, the tough one about replacing that one, and I'm not trying to make excuses, is in that particular case, they're not looking to sell the building. They want to lease it. And so that a lot of these kind of retailers or restaurants that we would normally be able to bring in, they want to own and buy because they want that investment as well. So that one's going to be tricky to fill over the long time. We do have interest, but... Um, that negotiation is the stumbling block right now on the lease versus sale. Mm -hmm. um, as you keep going down the road, um, oh, actually I'll back up even one. So that old bank building that's next yep. to the Hampton Inn, yep. um, nothing official yet, but there is a, a, a local broker um, slash contractor couple. So the one's the broker and one's the contractor and they're married looking at renovating that. And so they were gonna do kind of a down to the studs and build it back up and have it as three separate retail um, options. I think at least one or two would be restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, kind of tied on not being able to say the names from those restaurants right now. Yeah, okay. um, But th that's good news. Um, they've got a little bit of a stormwater issue they're gonna deal with. So that may take a little bit longer than um, it might otherwise to get done. But Nora is doing an awesome job trying to bring them over the finish line as well. Is, is uh, that so one behind there. Wells Fargo? Yeah. Yeah, okay. the it's, creek kind of runs between. Yeah, the two. and they cut it, some of the trees down around there. And yeah, yep. okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I can assure you that they did that without our permission. <laughs> 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 um, so going the other way, Ponderosa. Yeah, um, that one once again, tons of interest. Um, we have uh, prospects submitting plans as we speak. So that one, I'm really optimistic that as long as they kind of are able to respond to our engineering and zoning comments that you're gonna see an announcement on that one um, in the relatively near future that a lot of people have talked about in town and are excited about. So that one, um, just give me a little bit more time and we'll get there. Uh, keeping going down the same side of the road, Burger King, 
been yeah. empty forever, been an eyesore and a pain in our, our rear end forever. Um, so we reached out to them for years. And I mean years, whether it was Joe Topham or all our staff we've had forever, Nora did, I did. Um, and we wouldn't get a response. And the, what we understood was it was a conflict between the property owner and the franchisee or corporate and the franchisee. Um, and then what was it? Maybe six months ago, a year ago, the mayor asked if he could take a stab at it. He reached out and they responded immediately. So um, <laughs> they are potentially looking at um, bringing in one of the same franchises under their kind of big umbrella. So Burger King's owned by, I don't even know what the name of the company is, but bring in one of the other franchises within their um, kind of menu of options to, to town. So uh, we don't have any site plans, so I'm not saying that one's imminent, but they have reassured us that that is their expectation and what they plan to do with it, which is far uh, better than what we'd gotten for four or five years of absolutely no response and, and really no willingness to work with us. Yeah. Um, you know, just for a little bit of perspective, we worked with Chick-fil-A. We tried to reach out to Burger King just saying, hey, Chick-fil-A needs parking desperately. Um, and they wouldn't even entertain that. And that would have just been, hey, Chick-fil-A would have just paid them to use the parking. Yeah, and they wouldn't even respond to that. Yeah, that's weird. Yep. Um, hopping over to the other side, um, the old Ashland Inn and Suites behind Panera. Mm -hmm. um, that one is a little bit, I would call it in the same boat as where Apple Garden was before we bought it in the hands of someone who kind of want to run it, run it as a not so great hotel. Yeah. Um, there are folks interested in it. Uh, it's a really big piece of property relative to that area. Yeah. Um, so we are trying to work with our contacts in the development world to kind of put them in touch to make deals. Mm -hmm. um, and some of those are even folks we've worked with to do projects here. So that's happening, but I can't guarantee it's going to happen because it's in the property owner's decision. Um, yeah. But we are doing everything we can to try to get that to be a demo and build back up something new. I don't care if it's a restaurant, a grocery store, a hotel, whatever. But I don't think there's going to be much life left in that building um, that is really good for the town. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know whether you think about it or not. The TA, um, you know, they are actually a great taxpayer, yeah. but maybe not the, the the shiniest gem in in the crown as you come into town. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think you're going to see much change there. Um, my understanding, and this is from a while ago, that property's paid off, so they just kind of make money. Yeah. Um, which is great, and you know, it's a it's a needed service. But you know, we'd love to work with them to maybe find another location and and makes that something a little bit better. Yeah. Um. What else am I missing going down the road? Um, the hotels down the other way, the Motel 6s, the Super 8s, as you come back in, it's near like, the, I don't know whether it was CarMax or Auto Loan right next to Taco Bell. And then um, yeah, yeah, yeah. those ones, um, Norrin, correct me if there's anything more to this. Um, we'd love to redevelop those. And we, I think, are probably going to look to in the comp plan, maybe speaking to redevelopment of that area a little bit. Um, but they're there, they're existing, they're not the highest and best use probably, yeah. um, but there's not really movement in the development world to make changes there, but we're going to do some plans to enable that, were that to come about. Mm -hmm. um, the other ones that I kind of look at, and it's not a business, are the two shopping centers. Yeah. So the old Food Lion and the new Food Lion. Yeah. Um, we did a study and, and a plan with our engineering firm to kind of reimagine what the old food line could look like. And we did kind of a mixed use with apartments and uh, commercial. Um, so we have that out there just as an option for developers when they come to the table. Mm -hmm. um, but that one may or may not, and Nora, please correct me, be under negotiation to be sold. So there might be a new owner who might be a little more willing to, to do fun stuff there. Yeah. Um, but those old shopping centers, it's going to be hard to keep them full. That's kind of an older model. You've seen it change down in Richmond and Henrico. They're doing all these cool things to their shopping centers. Yeah. Um, I wish we were first in that, but I think we'll get there eventually too. But right now we're in the mode of trying to set the stage for it rather than actually something being imminent happening. Yeah. To it. Yeah. Um, what else did you have in mind that I missed? Were there specific buildings or anything? No, I mean, I think that that covered everything. Um, that I was thinking about in that air in that area. Yeah. Um, I didn't know if um, if you know going going back to the I'm trying to remember the name of the cross street there. I always want to say Archie Cannon or something like that, but it's a 
right right when you get off the highway, the one that goes by the TA and all that. Oh, Hill Carter Parkway. Hill Carter, yeah, yeah. I always get that get that mixed up. Um, at the end of that, that kind of dead ends into some residential, and I didn't know if there was if that was zoned in a way that it could be mixed use where that residential could be. I mean, it's it's apartments and stuff like that. It's high, um, you know, uh, it, it's it's um, high density stuff, but you know. The, there are places that's a, you know, people want to put in high density some places mm-hmm. and that's a place that it could be, you know, mixed, mixed use with, with business there. It mm-hmm. seems like, I don't know, you know? Yeah. Um, so two things on that one and Nora, please correct me on this one. Um, we've talked to a few people that because that um, Ashland and Suites is so big, there may be a mixed use component to that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we're not forcing it or we're not requiring it, but um, if they were interested in it, we'd, we'd certainly entertain the conversation. Yeah. Um, and then the other part is keeping Hill Carter Park going or Hill Carter Parkway going north. Okay. That's a really important road in our view because it would connect up to, I think it's Haley or Sylvia, um, that eventually you could kind of use as an alternative to get, get to Archie Cannon as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, the problem is there's swamps back there. So there's some wetlands we're going to have to deal with. Yeah. Um, but we do have that an eye towards that of being kind of a business area. And because it is adjacent to some residential, I'm sure we'd entertain the conversation of if it was structured right, doing some kind of mixed use up there as well. But yeah. like I said, that's going to be high dollars and trying to figure out how to mitigate those wetlands. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Okay, yeah, that's that's what I that's what I thought about there for sure. Great, great. Um, oh, I had one question, and y'all may or may not know the answer to this. I I, I was wondering about the the piece of property immediately south of here that's been clear cut along the highway um just behind walmart and what what's up with that uh is she on here nora i'm gonna put you on the spot do you have yeah a better I words it. than Sorry. i know what, what to say about that yeah no i can take it so there's a water project going on hanover county public utilities is putting in a force main is it sewer actually so there you go, just south of Walmart is a um, utility project. But then if you go a little further south of that, closer to where Ash Cake crosses over 95, that's an agricultural development. The gentleman is trying to do some agritourism. So the larger area is about 100 acres. That's what that's for. Okay. But what you see right now is utility work. And if I'm correct, Nora, r- r- remind me, the ag development, there aren't any plans anyone can look at. There's no, there's nothing really on paper out there. It's just the guy's word at this point. That's very true. And the state code has basically said if it's agritourism, that locality can't do anything to regulate that. But that property is in Hanover County. Yeah. It's not within the town. Yeah. And hi, Melissa. Uh, I wish I knew more what more to tell you, but I, I'm kind of in the dark a little bit like you are. Yeah, it's just interesting you see that. Yep. Well, it's one of the most common questions we get at this point. Like, what's <laughs> going on there? I bet. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's Hello, all. I, I think that's all I, I, I had thinking about that. Okay. Um, yeah. And then I guess one thing I was wondering about is the development north of Ashland on one that they're talking about at the old Camp Town races, is that within, I think that's Hanover County, but if it is, how is it going to affect Ashland and how do you all approach that? I mean, yeah, so I think you're probably talking about the Lowe's distribution center yeah, exactly. that's going in up there. Yeah. yeah, that one is in Hanover County. Um, and the way it's going to affect Ashland is with really bad traffic. Yeah. Um, and that that's the really worst part of that um and our role in that is to try to convince the county that mitigating the impacts of that traffic are important and that you should work with us on that um that was a by right development though which means it basically was already zoned yeah yeah. um so they didn't really have the ability to put too many teeth into them to try to pull out more improvements yeah um so we're kind of on the hook to deal with that one ourselves yeah so they can't, the, the proffers were already made a long time ago on that, I guess. Yeah, the zoning yeah. came around and yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, so, I mean, I guess my question is, does that mean that, I mean, we're the closest exit, right? Until 
We're the closest south one. I would hope they would go north to get to Doswell. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that means those trucks are going to come down one and take a left. Yep. And that's, that's where I was saying extending Hill Carter Parkway. Yeah. We want to provide that outlet for that truck traffic as an alternative as well so that they could keep going down. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go down at or take a left at basically Ash Cake or Sylvia Road and then take a right to Hill Carter Parkway to provide kind of two separate main in accesses to Route 54 that eventually would get you to um, I-95 just to provide two signaled intersections. Because, um, yeah, if you start adding up all this truck traffic at 1 and 54, it's it's going to be a lot and it's going to require us to do some things to deal with development outside of town. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. That sounds good. I can't think of anything else. <laughs> right. Well, there. Melissa, I, I know you, you came in a little bit after we'd given our, 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 our spiel that we'd hope to share with everyone. So there's one thing I do want to share with you, but then I'd love to hear if you have you know questions, concerns, um, the big thing we're trying to get the word out about is a change in town elections. Yeah. Um, the state changed their uh, changed the rules basically and said localities could no longer do May elections. So we've had to move ours to November, and the council had a choice of doing November 21 or November 22, and they chose November 21. So we moved all the elections up six months, and the biggest, most important part of that is it really compresses the time folks who might want to run have to run for council. Yeah. So all the paperwork and all the signatures need to be done by June 8th, so less than a oh. month away yeah. um, for that to be done. And that's why we're holding these meetings is to try to get the word out, try to make sure we can facilitate folks doing that. I volunteered. All the council will volunteer if people want their hand held to kind of how do I do this? We've got mentors, all that good stuff. They would be happy to help them. Um, this time it's two seats that are open. So it's Vice Mayor Hodges and then uh, Dr. McGraw. Their two seats are the ones that are going to be open. They are both running again, but are also both very much encouraging others to run along with them. So um, you've been around a town long enough to know, you know, one of the best things about our elections are they're nonpartisan. Yeah. Um, so you run and you, you vote for who's best for the town, not just because they have an R or a D next to their name. Yeah. Uh, but that's the big thing we're trying to get the word out about right now. Okay. That's cool. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, I enjoy learning about all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you, Jamie. Yeah, good to see you all too. Is that yeah. everything? Yeah, uh, okay. we, we haven't had someone else come on. Matt, uh, Melissa, did you want to share anything or ask any questions about anything? Not trying to put you on the spot. No, I, I did. I, I had a couple things. They're very, um, they're very uh, just kind of, um, they're not big planning things. They're just, I'm wondering if um, I'm having trouble with the traffic speed on Hanover and I wanted to bring that up to you all. Um, it's been a problem since the construction. Um, it's been a problem since the, t the speed limit was lowered on Thompson, then Hanover became like a place where people could speed. I don't know. I don't know when it actually started, but it's been happening here for the last two years uh, intensively. And um, all my neighbors are affected by it. And I'm the spokesperson for the neighbors. So I have called the police and told them several times. And I just wanted to let y'all know that um, if there are any planning things that you could do, like speed bumps, or I mean, I'm 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 at that point. Like I'm at speed bump point. It's so bad. I'm I feel like it's so dangerous because the um, public works guy was um, picking up the brush outside of the house, and and a car went by, and he was on the outside of his truck, right next to the yellow line, and that driver did not slow down at all if they were going at least 35 miles an hour. And when I saw that, I mean, that's just like, that's just, just such bad driving. And, um, and so, so much disrespect, like they just, the person just, it was a young driver. They just didn't even understand what could possibly happen. So that was one thing I was wondering if y'all could um, draw your attention to that problem. And then I'm wondering if there's any way that we could have some dark sky when y'all start to illuminate town hall um the lights are very tall they're taller than the other lights in town that are around the train station um i'm wondering if you could have like the lights set on dimmers at night um 
so that it's not lit up so bright and I can still see the stars a little bit at night. I mean, and I'm not trying to be, um, I, I'm just, at, I'm not trying to, of course we can't see the stars because we live in town, but we can see them a little bit. And I know there's going to be light, but if you could um, be sensitive to the amount of light that's going to be there, it's going to be, um, it, it would be nice if it wasn't so bright at night. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, that's not a complaint. That's just a comment, and we're we're happy to take that. No, we don't. Yeah, we don't I don't. I don't know what it's going to be like um, when it's finally done, but I do notice that there are three there are three light fixtures that are very close together. Usually, they're forty feet apart, a twenty foot to fifteen to twenty foot range on, and and so they overlap. So usually, you have them forty feet apart, and there are three on the corner that are really close. So I'm just kind of thinking, wow, you know, maybe there's some on that are off during night and there are only some that are on to give general lighting. And um, I'm thinking that those were two things that I had a comment on. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I can help in any way with the apple garden, but I had sent some um, notes to Nora that I'll send feelers out for possible, um, you know, really, I think a great use for that, that space would be a kind of educational JSARGE hub. I've always thought we should have some sort of community college hub here in Ashland. I would love to um, reach out to them and see if they would be interested in having some sort of workforce or some sort of like training. So I just think we need something like that. And it's a great location. Okay. Not uh, let me go through, go, go, let me go in order. Uh, so speeding, uh, you're on my commute. So, you know, I live out on Cubs Lane. So I see it three times a day too. Oh you know yeah, exactly. that's right. You do see it. <laughs> um, so I know exactly what you're talking about. I've even seen, I think you're, since your complaint came in, our folks out there kind of capturing data. Um, that is not just a one-time thing. That's part of a kind of compiling of the data to go along with your story. Um, so that we can do the, the proper analysis. I know Chief's all over that. He'll, he'll keep an eye on it and make sure that whatever the data comes back, we, we, we communicate back to the, to the community as well. Yeah, I, um, I left a message for Chief Smith, Smith and it was, or I said, you know, I want my children to know how many times you've called, how many times I've called you about this so that when I die in my street in front of my house, my children will know that how many times I tried, you know, it looks like uh, it's been it's been bad here lately. Thank you for looking into that. Of course. Um, on the lighting, I'm going to defer to Nora a little bit. I think most of, if not all, I hope all of our light fixtures are dark sky compliant at the very base level. Um, but then also, uh, we I think we're probably to wait until these new ones actually get turned on so we can see where the lighting levels with the parking lot with the building, and then we'll have to adjust some dimmers and timers and all that good stuff. Um, Mike or Nord, am I any way near accurate on that? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. The ones along the sidewalk are 14 feet to the base of the from the base of the light to the bottom of the fixture, and the others are 20 feet. The ones that seem a little taller, but we did that so that they could have a larger spread, and we wouldn't have to have as many for the parking lot safety and security. But it's definitely something we can keep an eye on, and I'm sure Mike's team through Public Works can. Um, tweak it as we go. So I appreciate your feedback. And if you could, you know, every couple of weeks, let us know if, if what we're doing works. Yeah. yeah. We'll create a tickler on ours to make sure that we're actually doing it. But also, you know, I don't know if I've changed it and then you're still happy or not happy. So if, you, if over time it doesn't ever get better, don't, don't feel like you're complaining. We, we, we want to hear it. Yeah. I think there could be a general setting that was like your normal setting for like, um, when you're open at night. So like the open or having an event at night and then there could be a dim down setting. So it doesn't look like um, too much. So it's not just like constantly bright like that all the time. And it could do, you know, it could have like a 10 o'clock set off like the tennis court courts do like at 10 o'clock tennis courts go and all those, all the lights go dim and then you have a dimmer setting. I know that town hall won't totally do that, but I'm just, since there's no, since there's no one going there um, during the Plus evening after, after 10 or so, you might be able to do a dimmer setting. So thank you. Okay. Uh, 
the other one, Apple Garden. Um, our plan for that is either hotel or restaurant. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking for. But to what you're talking about, um, we have a new kind of master plan design for the Holland track that I think has some office -y type design to it on the front end. Um, I'd be a little worried about the kind of focusing for what's going to end up being a tax exempt use on what we really want to be an economic development prospect. Mm -hmm. But I think there's an, a way to incorporate it in there that would make it kind of a cool campusy type thing and pretty, pretty close to an adjacent to Randolph Macon too. Um, so we'd be definitely willing to engage in that conversation. Yeah, that would be good with we're not making right there um, to do that with the Holland track. I hope I'm glad to hear that. I hadn't seen the new plans, um, but it was it didn't have a good like multi use, uh, more urban planning like uh, it, it it was sort of like that old style. So I hope that I hope that we've gotten it to be more like a neighborhoody feel or mixed use kind of neighborhoody feel it's rather more than more of an industrial off. use. So we're, we're looking for that to be a light industrial kind of manufacturing, high paying jobs type use up there. Okay. Uh, but that's, you know, we, we've kind of structured it. We're not going to guarantee it's going to be that way with the more heavier kind of bigger box manufacturing north with more of an office -y, kind of those J Sarge type feels closer to the school so that you do kind of have a step down transition. Um, and then for us, of course, connectivity into the community is important, even if it is a workplace we want to make sure that there's trails in there, people can kind of use it and that it, it's still part of the town rather than just this kind of put a big rectangle and don't ever go there. So we're not considering kind of a mixed use like? We've considered it in the past, but the zoning right now is for that M1 light industrial. Um, we're not really looking at the, the mixed use as far as like retail on the bottom with apartments or any of that kind of stuff. Right. Okay. Well. Um, at the very least, I'll send you the plan so you can take a look at it. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? I know it's a light crowd and Jamie stepped off. So you have, I think, six people here to, to meet your needs. What do you need, Melissa? <laughs> um, no, I really haven't. I, I've been so immersed in my own, like trying to keep my head above the water. I haven't been able, it's been a busy time for me just like with, with work and stuff. Um, in general, there's, there's a lot of growth and around, around the area. Um, Hanover is growing in a way that is putting a lot of pressure on the town, as you see. And it just seems like, and I don't, you know, I don't know, how much y'all are thinking about this, but it does seem like we need some kind of like bigger thinking going on in a, in a planning way. And y'all probably are doing that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I just, I think that we need a uh, housing for people who are getting out of their, their homes and needing smaller houses, like apartment townhouses and condos to live in. We don't have that. I know y'all are talking about that. Maybe um, I'd, I'd hate to see the developer that's actually like, um, taking so much money from the natural resources, being so involved in that. I would like to, you know, maybe see some other kinds of um, developers and, and planners and people involved in those kinds of projects. We seem to have the same one over and over and over. And that developer is, is in our county. Um, so like a lot of zoning and a lot of land is getting gobbled up right now with little houses everywhere. And we're gonna st we're starting to see a lot of sprawl. So I just like note to the community at that, that those are the times when you try to like have some more bigger planning that looks at how your the infrastructure and the urban density is gonna grow well with mixed income and, and housing and workplaces and, having that kind of, um, you know, density happen. And I know that y'all have taken that density out of Ashland, but I think we, we need to have it in there in a different way. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't read the, what y'all been working on, but those are just my off the cuff, what I see happening. Yeah. Um, your point to the bigger planning is right on. And Nora and I recognize that, you know, it, it, the timing's actually perfect because we're doing our comp plan and Hanover starts theirs next year. So we approached the county and said, hey, we want you at a, the seat at the table at ours. We want to honestly have a little bit of a special seat at your table as you do yours because you're growing so much around us. And they were definitely open to that. So 
We obviously have brought them into ours. They have promised us a seat at the table during theirs. So I'm optimistic, especially with new county administrator, new, you know, everything's yeah. new and different yeah. that um, there's going to be a good working relationship there. And, and we can really get some, some traction on what we've talked about for decades in this town of joint planning and kind of the, the boundaries of the town and the county. Yeah, and his name is escaping me, and I've worked directly with him. Um, John Podesky. Yeah, Podesky, mm -hmm. and I, I'm just like my brain, but um, Podesky is a very uh, community-oriented person, so if if you're asking him, he will do that. Yep, so I've known John for a long time. We, we, we work together really, really well, and you are dead on. He's, he's yeah. great at community planning and kind of strategic planning and getting so, out and knowing what the community wants. So this is our time because we haven't had that. And so that's great news. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, I don't want to contradict you, but one of the things I do want to point out that I think Nora would punch me later if she, I didn't tell you, when you talk about density and apartments, 50% of the residential units in the town are either apartment or attached home. So I, I'm not fighting you. I agree, we, you can always use more, but we have that. I mean, we have a ton of that. And so we try to get a little bit of a balance of, we want the residential, we want, the, you know, or we want the bigger home, we want the smaller home, and we want that, and balance is what we're kind of focusing on at the moment. Well, and I guess my point is not that you, it's that you put them all integrated in together so that you don't have, like you were saying with the Holland, you don't just have this like square of this and the square of this and the square mm -hmm. of this, because that's kind of how Ashland grew. Yeah. Um, it, and it sort of, it, it has pockets, but um, it's a more integrated design planning where you, um, you do filter in industrial and light manufacturing, you, 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 you filter those into residential and mm -hmm. it, and it, and it does, um, and we see it in Scott's edition and in these revitalized projects, we can see it happening in Richmond and different areas. Um, we we do need somewhere for people in Hanover to age near Ashland, mm -hmm. and um, like there are a lot of a lot of people I know that I've grown up with have these houses and they want to live somewhere and they don't have anywhere to live, and they want to stay in Hanover and they don't know where to go. So there's just that there's a need there, and it's gonna it's just gonna get a little bit worse here for a, a while. So. I don't know. I haven't done, I, I'm not working on planning right now, so I haven't really been thinking about it, but um, I'm sure y'all figure it out. <laughs> Alyssa, this We're is Nora. Try. In yeah. the chat, I put the two links. One, the most important is to our comprehensive plan survey. If you didn't fill that out in the past couple months, there's a link there for that. And then also for the railroad avenue closure, I'd really love your input on that. Oh, to keep it that way? Yeah, I mean, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't keep it that way. Well, please, it, the survey, I liter it will take you maybe one or two minutes if you could fill that out, because there are some people who don't agree with that. So we're trying to get a holistic survey. It's the best thing that we've ever, that ever came out of COVID, right? Because I mean, that's a, that's a vital little, I mean, everyone's having a good time now. They're not worried for their life when they're sitting there having a meal. So council is going to make that, or I'm going to put that decision in front of council on June 1st. So I think a decision is pretty imminent here and we should be able to, to decide one way or the other and move on. Okay. All right. So I'll, co I'll copy these um, links and um, do that. Thank you. Maggie, I, I see you being a fly on the wall. Do you have anything you want to share or ask questions about? Hi. <laughs> um, I haven't seen y'all in two hours, so I just thought I'd come on. Um, no, the question I have is, what are you expecting on recovery ARPA money, Recovery Act money? And have you started those conversations? What's the plan yep. on so, uh, budgeting? We are a, I don't remember what, the non-entitlement locality. So our numbers aren't out there officially yet. Um, VML or the Virginia Municipal League has told us we should, should, I'm not going to guarantee it because I've heard that a lot, get information next week on what our number would actually be. Um, preliminary estimates that I want to believe, but I don't believe, are something to the tune of $7 million, which is almost equivalent to our budget, which would be amazing. Um, the regulations have come out, though, 
And so the regulations do have a ton of strings attached to them. Some of the fun ideas I had are not going to be possible, but we'll still get creative and try to do that. Um, so right now we're going through the regulations, trying to figure out what types of things we can put in front of council to get their input on. And then, you know, the dollars will obviously um, kind of inform that as well once we get those numbers. So I would imagine either probably the, I hope if everything, if the state does everything they say they're going to do, I would hope we could have a conversation with council maybe June 18th or the first meeting in, in July. Okay. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll go out on a limb here a little bit. I sat in on a VML. We had a board meeting earlier today. And so I had the same conversation. And my understanding is uh, being a non-entitlement uh, community, that the way the language was written, that the General Assembly is supposed to decide when, when that money will come out to the non-entitlement communities. But there's been some conversation with the governor's office and uh, they understand that, you know, we don't want to wait until the General Assembly comes back in session. But uh, there has been some conversation. It seems like to the degree that you can fast track anything on a state level, uh, I think that we'll, we'll be having that understanding more clear. Uh, and hopefully it'll be uh, early August or late July <laughs> when, when the approval, you know, comes through and, and there's a, a means to do it without too many fingers uh, and too many uh, question marks coming in from other entities. Yeah. And so. then that makes sense. When do the regulations say you have to spend it by? What's our window? I think it's a long, much longer time frame. It's either, is it two, three or four years, something like that, Matt? End of 2024 is the last I saw, but we may be receiving the funds in two separate um, allotments. So we're still waiting to hear about that as well. So my hope is we can evaluate regulations, get council's consensus, figure out when the money's going to come and kind of be ready to, if we are, if it's a quick project, then we're ready to spend the money when the money actually hits our bank. Or if it's longer term stuff, we have time to, whether it's a construction, do engineering, all that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think just, do you, we can continue this conversation offline. I, sorry, James and um, oh, did she, Melissa, I'm, I'm the director for Downtown National Association. Um, my name is Maggie Longest and I um, haunt Town Hall for a living. So uh, these guys are so used to me that they, um, that that's why I'm throwing tough questions at them cold. Um, are you thinking connectivity projects like English Street Master Plan, other sidewalks in 54 are, are ruled in or out? No oh. idea yet? infrastructure came down on a really narrow scale is basically okay. water and sewer which good for the county that should be right yeah. for them um and then broadband which sounds exciting but only broadband for unserved or underserved communities and so to expand our municipal network unfortunately whether you like it or not comcast does serve us um so that that kind of stinks um so that they really narrowly defined the infrastructure investment so i think center street unfortunately was one of my fun ideas to try to get done in a once in a lifetime project with one big plot of money is going to be shot down okay will you send me those we would like to be able to send in suggestions or comments before town council makes a decision um but i don't want to be off base if we're doing you know i want to try to play within that yep yep thank you Josh, what what are some of the the kind of um, bigger subjects that that money can be spent on? Sure. Um, and now I'm testing my memory a little bit. Um, so business support. So that we did that with CARES. I imagine a portion of ours will definitely go towards business support, mostly towards small business and or those um, industries most affected. So the tourism, the retail, the restaurants, et cetera. Um, which is great for us because that's where our bread and butter is anyway with the meals and lodging tax. We love supporting them. Um, there's an responding to the COVID pandemic. So if you had health folks, if you had all that, there's, um, what are they calling it? It's not hazard pay, but premium pay or something like that for folks who still went to work and did stuff in the pandemic. Um, but even that, I mean, I would love to reward our employees because we didn't close. 
um, and we kept open to the public. But even within that, they started to put, but you should focus on the lowest income folks whose salary is X percent above or below. So they put made some complication to it. A big one that I'll, I'll be honest, I'm probably going to recommend to town council, depending on how much, is revenue replacement. So they can actually, this time, the CARES, you definitely could not, but this one, you can genuinely do an analysis of how much revenue you would have had had COVID not happened and just put it in the bank. And I would love to use that to replenish our own reserve fund balance a little bit um, in light of the bad times that we had there. Um, and then I think there's there's kind of language that I'm trying to figure out what they want you to do with it of focusing your investment on those who are most disparately impacted by the effects of the pandemic. Um, so I think they're obviously talking about low income and minority, um, but I'm trying to figure out like, is that generically or is that within these other buckets that you've got out there? Um, so those are the ones off the top of my head. There may be one or two more that I'm missing, but those are the ones that come to mind pretty quickly. So it sounds like the last two are really the only ones you can use. Yeah, I mean, unless we get creative, you know, there are, um, I think, you know, I said water and sewer, great for Hanover County. It's going to be kind of one of the things we put in front of council are, there are certain areas of town, there's very small ones that don't have water and sewer connections yet. So even during an annexation, they never got connected. Is this our one opportunity to have the free money, the dollars to go and say, hey, you got left behind there. We want to make it up to you. We want to make sure you have the opportunity to connect too. So yeah. there's bucket wise, you know, we're going to try to get creative with each of them um, and figure out things that we could do. But yeah, it is those last two are the, the biggest ones for us. We've hit an hour here. Any other questions? I don't want to belabor this or, you know, take too long with folks, but you know where to find us. I think I've made a promise to each or all of you to send some kind of email. So I'll send you that information, uh, the surveys, the election info, the regulations, all that. But um, genuinely, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. This is, uh, you know, take your lunch hour. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. And if oh, you could you send those two surveys to me, that would be great. Definitely. We'll do it here in a minute. Cool. Thanks. All right. Thanks, folks. Thanks. See ya.